there is nothing more frustrating than doing all the right things to try to lose weight. And it doesn't work. You know, your spouse loses weight or your friends are losing weight, but you're not. And you're wondering, what am I doing wrong, right? And then your friends or spouse will dub in all the reasons why they think it's not working and they're usually wrong. And then that can just make things worse, giving you the wrong diagnosis, et cetera. I've done videos on this topic, extensive videos on all the reasons why people don't lose weight. But today I'm going to share one additional reason that will make everything make sense if you have this problem. So you're not stuck in this mystery of what could it be, okay? It is true that past dieting slows your metabolism, okay? It is true that the longer you've had insulin resistance, the harder it is to lose weight, okay? So we have that factor. We also have people doing the right type of diet, you know, ketogenic diet, low carbs, doing intermittent fasting, okay? And then also applying it correctly. That's very, very important. And also your sleep is really important too. So if you're not sleeping, your blood sugar is going to be off, your stress hormones are going to be up, and that can be the reason why you're not losing weight as well. And it could also be other health problems. All of these are valid, but there's one more reason that I've never covered in any videos, and that is your genes, your genetics, okay? Now, this is a very interesting subject, and I'm going to give you some solutions if your problem is genetic, but I'm doing a deep dive into genetics right now, and so I have some fascinating new information I'm going to share with you in upcoming videos, but there's something called a gene variant, and a gene is basically a blueprint that tells the body what to do, and there's all sorts of environmental things, lifestyle things that can affect your genes, uh, positive and negative. But within individuals, there's certain variations of certain genes that act differently. So one person could have a, a fast metabolism and another person could actually have a slow metabolism. One person can burn fat slowly. The other one can burn fat very quickly. Some people are just always hungry. And no matter how much they eat, they can still keep eating. Whereas other people uh, can get satisfied very quickly with food. Then you also have all these different behaviors, you know, like with uh, sweets, for example. Uh, certain people, when they start eating sweets, they can't stop, right? They just will keep eating and keep eating and they keep eating for some reason. Other people might go after fatty foods and maybe some other people might go after more protein. And then you have exercise. You take two people, right? They are working out the same. One person loses, the other person doesn't. So this can be very, very frustrating if you don't understand uh, there could be a genetic factor. Now, you may consider this a weakness, okay, within your genes, but it's not really a weakness. If you understand um, the body is always trying to survive and do its best within its environment. And so these genetic uh, variances are not errors. They're just things that happened within our genetics long ago and those genes now do not help us in the current environment we're in. So let's just take metabolism, okay? What would be the survival advantage of having a slow metabolism and burning fat slower and retaining fat, right? Versus other people, uh, they're just very lean and they burn very, very brightly. So what would be the advantage of someone with a slow metabolism? Well, if you take a look at thousands of years ago, let's say in the caveman era, if you had a slow metabolism and you could retain fat easier and hold fat longer, you were the one that survived. The people who couldn't store fat would die off easily. But of course, in this environment nowadays, um, it doesn't help that there's so much food available. Now, what about the person who, when they eat sugar, they just can't stop? What would be the survival advantage of that. Well, let's say, for example, there's not a lot of food and you're foraging through the woods and you happen to come across a beehive filled with honey, right? And this is a lot of energy, right? This can give you a lot of survival energy by consuming all of that beehive. You wouldn't necessarily just eat a little bit. You'd probably eat the whole thing. And that would help you survive versus someone else that wouldn't necessarily eat those carbohydrates. Because eating those concentrated carbohydrates would then very easily convert to fat, which would give you more storage fuel to live longer. But that doesn't actually help you in this environment when there's so many different types of 
honey around or other sugars. In fact, when I have my genetics tested, I have um, kind of a, a gene variant related to sugar that once I start, I can't stop, which makes total sense because growing up, I was the kid that would eat massive amounts of sugar, almost like I was not surviving, that I would have to hoard it because I thought maybe I wasn't going to eat tomorrow. That's kind of the thought process that was going through my mind. In fact, during Halloween, right, we would have bags of candy. I would eat the whole thing in one night. I mean, that's just crazy. And I did that for years. And so in this environment, it can be very, very deadly to your health. The problem with these gene variants, especially as it relates to losing weight, is just that you're in the wrong environment now, right? You're no longer in that environment where it helped you survive. So I'm going to give you some tips on what you should do. First of all, realize this, you could be doing everything right. It's not that you're doing anything wrong, okay? It's just that it's going to take longer. It's going to take more work. You have certain genes that are still operating like you're still living a thousand years ago when it's actually 2022. So number one, give it some time. Number two, um, chances are you're going to have to be very strict with your carbohydrates. Whereas someone else can tolerate more carbohydrates, you probably can't. Number three, I would definitely add more fasting, more prolonged fasting, fast longer. Um, that's going to help you. That's something you can do. That's called an epigenetic action, something that control your genes and greatly help you because we want to mimic um, the environment in the past, which you didn't eat three meals a day. You'd be lucky if you ate once a day or once every other day. Now, if you're like me, okay, and uh, you have a problem with sugar, you're going to have to completely avoid sugar. Like just a little bit of sugar here and there is not going to help you because that's going to lead to more and more sugar. And that is one reason why I don't eat any sugar. And I have enough knowledge and discipline just to avoid it. But I could very easily slip into that sugar thing and just consume a massive amount. And this may also include avoiding some of the keto snacks that are sweet or um, even the sugar alcohols. You might not do well with them. Why? Because you're still getting the sensation of sweet. It might be definitely better and good for uh, a transition. If you also have a problem with being satisfied, okay? and you're just always hungry, and you just enjoy food, the way to handle that is to really get into a deeper level of ketosis where your body is really adapted to fat. It's burning fat 24 seven, and you just absolutely have no appetite whatsoever. Uh, that's the best way to handle the appetite thing. And of course, when you're eating, eat nutrient dense foods. And that way your cells will be satisfied. So many people when they do keto, they don't focus on the nutrients, so yes, you run your body on ketones, but the nutrients in the food actually help satisfy you. If you ever eat an empty tomato or some of the food that's empty, like let's take Doritos, right? You can't just have one, right? You have to have the whole bag. It's like so empty of something. You're trying to satisfy yourself, but it's impossible because there's no nutrition in there in the first place. And of course, they also have flavor chemicals and MSG that stimulates hunger. All right, and the last point I'm going to bring up is you may have to add a lot of different um, tactics, okay, or things that can give you advantage, uh, not just one thing, but a lot of different things, right? And that can include more exercise, okay, more high-intensity exercise, more recovery, the outside of vinegar with each meal. That can include the outside of vinegar in your water. That will greatly help blood sugars. More sleep, okay, that could be huge. Berberine, which is like a natural um, metformin, which helps insulin resistance, uh, adding cinnamon. These are just really little things that can make a big difference. And the other point, if your metabolism is on the slow end, you're not going to consume as much fat as someone with a faster metabolism. So in this situation, you don't want to add a lot of fat. Okay. You just want to have the fat that normally comes with the protein and don't add the extra uh, bulletproof coffee. Well, initially you should just to be able to fast longer, but over time you should then cut back on your fat, maybe below hundred grams, but not below 75 grams. Okay. So you don't want to go low fat, but you don't want to go high fat. Okay. You want probably want to go medium fat. Realize keto is low carb. It's not high fat. You can't eat more fat to get deeper in the ketosis. It's about lowering your carbohydrate. And the other thing I would really avoid is going out to dinner. Try not to go out to dinner very often because 
It's crapshoot. There's so many things that can throw you off. The bread, the desserts, the temptation, the quality of food. Um, very, very important just to be able to control your food. So again, realize that you may have a gene variation. You just need to um, give it more time and do these things to more of an extreme level. Now, if you haven't seen my recent video on metabolism, this will give you additional things you can do. Check it out. I put it up right here.